All right, let's get started in this video. We're gonna work our way, start off with the air guns and then move to the firearms. We're gonna do chronograph test. We're gonna blow up some sodas, take down some Texas stars. We'll shoot some steels. After that, I wanna run these through ballistics gel and show you the difference. One main advantage to firearms is velocity. The air guns are gonna to top off around the speed of sound, usually a little bit lower. Some are a little bit higher, but the higher velocity through the gel is gonna create a lot more cavitation. And that's not to say that the air guns aren't gonna do their job because they definitely are. The cavitation just, it's gonna be a lot more effective though. We're gonna do three rounds through each gun. I'll sync this all up so it goes by a lot faster. We'll do them all at the same time. Three rounds through each, we'll see how consistent this is and we'll see what they average. So my pellet gauntlet is spitting out rounds around the same as the 22 long rifle pistol. The Ruger American with the subsonic is the closest to that as well. The high velocity is really screaming though in comparison. One thing to note on my slug gauntlet though is that I can kind of crank that up a little bit more. I don't know how much more it can go. You can actually do power mods so Technically, it could go a decent amount higher, but stock, it could probably hit, I wanna say like 850 with those slugs, but that's probably gonna be top from stock. We're loaded up with standard velocity. We're taking out the Ruger American first. That big boy star though, that's gonna get taken down first. Usually I do that last, but first we're gonna drop that soda. I have one extra bullet if I miss. All right, six shots, five targets. Give myself a chance to miss one shot, that's it. I guess it doesn't help if the plates don't wanna come off. I kinda have to hit them at the edge, I guess. Load it up two more. I needed three. I guess subsonic 22 is basically the bare minimum for that star. The pellet gauntlet 30. Let's drop the middle star. We'll do one soda first though. <laughs> Thing got yeeted. See, just like that. Last but not least, the slug gauntlet with the side lever caulking. That thing slams the steels. I have the subsonic, the standard velocity, and the high velocity loaded in this. I'm going from slowest to fastest Let's test these out in those sodas. Standard velocity now. High velocity. Let's do one more of those. Now, those high velocities are cranking. They don't seem to be doing too much difference on the soda, but they sound a lot louder compared to the subsonics. We'll have to wait and see what happens when we put those through gel. Those will probably be the most powerful though. Or maybe the 22 Magnum. I wanna see if I can blast one of those sodas with the high standard R101. Then we're gonna move to the gauntlet.
I gotta hit that one more time. I just grazed it. I guess that'll have to do. I have one pellet left in this, then we'll switch to the slug gauntlet. Slug time. <laughs> Wasn't expecting to hit steel, but it went through the soda and then smashed the steel plate behind it. I wasn't expecting to hit the steel, but it slammed that soda and then smashed into the plate. Last one. This thing definitely carries a lot of energy with that round. Double the weight of the 22 long rifle, 78 grains. Let's see what difference it makes with these various rounds. We're gonna test them on the dueling tree. After that, let's do a couple groups on the pendulum and then we're gonna swap to the ballistic gel and wrap things up. I'm curious to see what these different cartridges are gonna do to that dueling tree. My guess though, is the gauntlet with the slugs is going to be the most powerful. Not necessarily in foot pounds, but in terms of actually transferring energy with those extra grain rounds, that thing, th this will explode. That thing just, it'll keep going until it flattens out. All right, let's go for the edges. Subsonic, nada. Standard velocity. Standard velocity, nada. I guess I don't need to swap to the pendulum after this because I'm putting groups on it right now. High velocity. Almost there. 44.8 grain pellets. Nada. Slug gauntlet with 78 grain rounds. See what I'm talking about? So far, that transferred the most energy. Let's put some on paper. We got high velocity, and then we'll compare that to the slug gauntlet. Pretty solid. I think this is honestly more accurate than the Ruger American. You cannot beat those Griffin boat tail slugs. They are incredible. This Gauntlet 30 with those slugs is capable of less than an inch group at 100 yards. It's gel time, same deal, slowest to fastest. Almost looks like I could put that back in. The subsonic and the standard velocity did not make it through. The high velocity did. Pellet gauntlet. Slug 
Slow gauntlet. This one flattened out from the slug gauntlet, didn't make it as far. Let me take a shot from like, I'm gonna go back about another 30 yards. All right, let's try this out. Let's do three rounds from the high standard. Now for 22 Magnum. The Gauntlet 30 is pretty neck and neck in price compared to the Ruger American. This is around $400. Sometimes it's less on sale. The ability to run a moderator and suppress the gun without a tax stamp is one hell of a bonus. You save $200 right off the bat with this. I can use firearms and air guns in my backyard. I have access to both, and sometimes I still prefer using air guns. With the Gauntlet 30 being pretty close to matching 22 LR in ballistics, the speed will get away from you on the high velocity, but the foot pounds is still there. This is capable of transferring more energy with the higher grain rounds versus the more frangible 40 grains that are just gonna explode. The speed out of this won't match the high velocity, but it doesn't mean that it's not capable. So the main takeaways from this, if you like 22 long rifle, I highly suggest getting a Gauntlet 30 PCP air rifle. It's easy to suppress. You save money on the tax stamp, barely any cleaning. Barrel's gonna be absolutely spotless as long as you run the right ammo. It has very similar ballistics to a 22 long rifle. Potentially can carry more power with the higher grain ammo. And if you really wanted to step things up, you could get the power upgrade for this. I'm not sure how much extra power you get out of it, but I'm sure with that kit, you probably would surpass the foot pounds of the 22 long rifle with high velocity ammo. I think we're within about 10 or so foot pounds here right now. So that power kit would, I would imagine it has to get you past that 125 plus foot pound mark. All right, that wraps it up for today. The 22 long rifle versus the Gauntlet 30. Very similar in power, very similar in price, massive difference in cleaning. Ability to use it in your backyard, I think that's pretty hard to beat. If you had no consideration for air guns before, I hope this video changed your perspective. And I swear if you get one of these, you'll thank me later.